it's midnight. It's time to praise the Lord. And they started praising the Lord. And the next thing you know, there, there was an earthquake. And the thing about it was, God was so pleased with their praise under that circumstance that he joined in with it. And you know, God always seems to make it. Yeah. I know. Now you told me this 300 times. Well, tell it to them. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> you know, And then, you know, the Philippians. <laughs> All right, well, scoot up here and tell that story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I will hear this story for the 308th time now. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> okay, are we ready to roll? We're rolling. Okay. Well, we are to encourage one another with stories from the scriptures, from our own experience. I think Paul and Silas being in Philippi is a delightful little story talking about how God is pleased whenever we offer praise in the midst of difficult circumstance. So here's the situation. Paul and, and Silas are in Philippi. They're preaching the gospel. And then they are thrown in jail. First they're beaten and then thrown in jail for, for preaching the gospel. For pre preaching the gospel. Okay. And why was that such a big deal? Uh, Is it because they were Jews preaching Christianity? Or because they were Christians preaching Christianity? Well, first of all, I mean, uh, the, the Jewish factor has to be a part of it, but it was uh, Satan really opposing their efforts. Well, right, but you had to use some kind of, they had to be arrested for something. I, I imagine disturbing the peace. Right, because this is during Roman times. A Roman rule. Roman yeah. rule in what is now Israel. Well, and of course the Roman Empire covered the entire Mediterranean basin. Right. Okay, so whether it was because they were disturbing the peace or, or whatever it was, they were beaten and thrown into prison. It wasn't called the blue line back then, it was the red line. <laughs> and so at midnight, Paul had one of the, we had them a few years ago where you just press a button on your watch and uh, it would just show uh, up the numbers. It wouldn't show the face, just the numbers. Well, now they got the digital watches where you just boop and it lights up. Uh huh. And Paul had something about like that and he hit the button and lo and behold, it said midnight and then he hollered at Silas, man, it's time to praise the Lord. So they just started praising the Lord. Next thing you know, in the jail, in the jail, in the dungeon, just yeah. had their ass beat. <laughs> yes, well, my, and their backs were pretty pretty well dealt with with the Roman cat of nine tails. But anyway, they start praising the Lord, and then there's an earthquake. And I always like to point out to folk, God was so pleased with their praising him that he joined in singing. He always sings bass, and boy, that bass just rattled that prison there. And all the manacles fell off of the prisoners. And the uh, guy who was the keeper of the prisoners would have killed himself. And Paul said, hold it, brother. Wait, wait a minute. We're all still here. And so... Uh, well, he was going to kill himself because he had thought they escaped. And he, right. he was going to have to deal with the ramifications of that. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, a little later on, we have the picture of the jail keeper, our, our, our guard, tending to the wounds of Paul and Silas. Ultimately, from this, he and his whole household will turn to the Lord, and I would like to surmise that he became the first elder in the church of Philippi. So The jailer. The jailer. Yes. So, we just simply need to be reminded that there isn't any situation so bad that uh, praise to God would make it better. In fact, over in 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, verses 16, 17, and 18, it says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It has nothing to do with things all being good and right and so forth, but it's good and right that we should praise the Lord in every circumstance. And so that's what we need to do and, and need to be encouraged to do whenever we're in difficulty. It's easy to praise the Lord in the good times. Mm -hmm, right. When money's coming in, but that's easy to do that, but praise the Lord in the bad times. It, yes. It becomes habit. Well, you know, a number of years ago with Jim Baker, back when he was in favor with uh, the Christian community in the whole world, founded the Praise the Lord movement. 
PTL, as a PTL club. The PTL Television Network presents Jim and Tammy. And people put that, that sign up everywhere. Everybody understood what PTL stood for. Praise the Lord. So anyway, we uh, need to have that message recaptured for today. I was driving back from Lincoln to Scott City, Kansas. Lincoln, oh, Lincoln, Lincoln Kansas. Lincoln, Kansas to Scott City, Kansas. I didn't have a big truck, but I had a truck. And I had just eaten some Dairy Queen. I had, I think, it, I can't remember what it was called, uh, Southern Deluxe. You know, it was loaded up and it had that really good spicy sauce on it. <laughs> The heat is on. The new DQ Flamethrower Chicken Sandwich and the original Flamethrower Burger. Because one good burn deserves another. And about a few miles down the road, I just passed a rest area. No big deal. And in Kansas, you pass a rest area, you better prepare for the hall. My stomach started bubbling. And I thought, well, I'm going to go here. So I thought, okay, you keep looking. And it was about twilight. And for those that don't know what twilight is, twilight is when the sun has set, but it's still light out. So kept driving, no place to stop. And stomach is, I got to go. Mm -hmm. This is happening, whether I want it to or not, whether there's a rest area or not, this is going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. So I began to look for a place to pull over. Well, the problem with that part of Kansas on interstate is there is no place to pull over. The interstate is elevated, and then there's no trees, there's no nothing. It's just wide open, people can see you. So I eventually saw a culvert, and the culvert is just a place where a little bit of water can run underneath the interstate, and it dips down quite a ways. And there were some trees down there in the bottom, and I thought, okay. So I pull over the side of the road, and I am hustling because it's downhill and it's twilight and so I'm moving and I'm all 250 pounds of me is going down this hill and then pretty soon <laughs> and I hit something I don't know what in the world it was after I finally you know just a massive tumble and I realized I'd hit something what in the hell was that all about I'm laying face down and behind me, my feet are up in the air and my shoestrings are tangled up in a barbed wire fence. I had just nailed a barbed wire fence and fell over and I shit my pants. It happened. And that was one time I just looked up and I said, and that's about as bad as it gets in that position because you got no underwear, you got no toilet paper, you got no water. And I said, praise the Lord. All right. And then made the best of it. Mm, the rest is pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, <laughs> we, we have there a, a very vivid illustration. I remember saying, praise the Lord, uh -huh. praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> he, he had learned the lesson way back then. We, how, how many years ago was that? I would have been 20 or 21 years old, so 20 years ago, a while back. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We got to go to church. Where are we going to church at? First Congregational Church in Hutchinson. First Congregational Church in Hutchinson, Kansas. And it is beautiful out.